when they were building this new road over here, this is the old road, they were excavating for the old new road, and as they were digging, they came up with all kinds of uh, uh, buttons and uniforms and soldiers who had been buried. They actually dug up many of the old bodies. Are ghosts hiding on these riverbanks? Check out these digital images we capture. This one appears to be an apparition. These streaks of light darted in the darkness, and orbs were spotted multiple times. They were all somebody's husband, somebody's father, somebody's son. They were all somebody's darling. Unexplained Cases brought me their mascot. His name is Creek Boy, and he seems incredibly fascinating. This guy is fascinating because he started speaking to me even before I sat down today to do this. Um, he it's he's kind of sad because he loves being needed he loves being part of a team he loves um, that that unexplained cases has kind of taken him under their wing and named him Creek Boy and refer to him as a mascot this means a lot to him he's definitely a soul that is stuck and troubled he doesn't have any desire to move on I've asked him that he's needing to stay where he's at for closure. He feels like he's, he lost someone he loved and he lost someone he loved there and this location that he's at. And he doesn't wanna leave until he can apologize to this person. And he wishes he could have done more. He wishes he could have saved him. It's really important for him to be a part of a team, to be part of a group. It's feeling like maybe he was, maybe he was in the army or military because loyalty, camaraderie, that's all really important to him. Um, which is why he's saying he, he feels like these, these two men, unexplained cases, have given him that back, something he had lost. But for now, he's telling me a story about how his friend died and how he and his friend died together in this location. And he hasn't been able to leave since because of his connection and relationship with this friend and his fear of leaving him. He had a fear of leaving him when they were in the army together and he still has this fear of leaving, and I'm not sure why. Right now, he is overwhelmed with emotion. He's grateful that someone is talking to him and communicating with him, um, but he is very much stuck in that moment that he and his friend died. Um, they both died very quickly, um, and they died together, and this is why, again, being a part of something and being connected to people are very important to him. He's not totally understanding that he is no longer in body and is not going to be able to find that connection that he had in body um, because he's not understanding the difference. So in other words, once he accepts and understands he's in spirit form and allows himself to move on, he will be able to connect and have um, community in spirit form. But he's not accepting that. He's struggling with that disconnect from the body to the spirit. He's really stuck in that respect. This is why um, he's seeking camaraderie anywhere he can get it. So again, it is, so it's really important that myself and Rick and Darren and anyone else involved in unexplained cases is very cognizant of this and that we don't take advantage of this relationship he's seeking and we don't we instead teach him that we're in body and you're not but we can help you move on and find that community community in those relationships that you're really looking for when you're ready I want to see if I can find out why Creek Boy needs to apologize He's saying that he hurt someone. He hurt his wife before he left. He said he's saying things to her that he didn't, that were hurtful right before he died. He's also feeling like he wants to apologize to his friend for 
not being able to save him. He feels like he should have jumped in front of his friend and protected him, and he didn't. He got hit from behind. His friend got hit from behind, and he, he was looking the wrong way. And he's saying that had he been a good soldier, he would have been looking out for his friend so his friend didn't get killed. He's carrying a lot of guilt and a lot of responsibility for it sounds like things that weren't his fault. He's feeling a lot of guilt towards his wife. He's feeling a lot of guilt towards his friend. It's, and this is going to be hard for him to recover from, especially since he's not willing, he's, he's communicating with me, but he's not hearing me when I say to him that these things happened, it's okay, we can let go, we can move on. He's not hearing any of that. He is going to be here for a while and hopefully we will be able to help move him along. Why did you reveal yourself to me that day? This is coming from Rick. So he's saying he revealed himself to you that day because he knew you could see him. He's been waiting for someone to be open to see him. That's been very important to him. He has shown himself to other people, but they didn't believe it and or they didn't um, grab a picture or do anything with it. it. They kept it to themselves. He's been desperately looking for someone to connect with, um, but most people either when they would feel him or see him would panic and move away or they experienced it and wouldn't share it. And he was looking for someone like you who was willing to connect with him, speak with him, engage with him. Our, the next question is, are you stuck literally at 14 Mile Creek for 150 years? So he, he's saying, I'm choosing to stay. I'm not stuck, I'm choosing to stay. And yes, I have been there this whole time. Uh, where were you born and raised? The first thing, uh, what I first heard was Kentucky. Where did you, why did you join the Confederacy? He's saying it's, it wasn't optional, it's just what you did. He said there aren't any other spirits stuck there, it's just him. It, he used to be, there used to be other spirits there, but they've since all moved on. What's your friend's name and what's your wife's name? And have you connected with them and have they crossed over? He's alone. He's saying, yes, I'm, I'm here alone. I've chosen to be here alone. I've had the opportunity to move on. I've had the opportunity um, to, to, go, to pass over and go back into body, but he's choosing to stay there. Um, Gail was what comes to me for his wife's name. I don't know if that's accurate or not, um, but Gail is what comes to me for his wife's name. Jeff, something with the J for his friend's name. Um, and he's still, he, he's still, he's not going to leave. Like, he still wants to communicate more. He still wants to be involved with what you're doing. Um, he's not ready to move on. So he doesn't want us to focus on helping him pass on because he knows that that's something that I feel is important. He said um, he wants to be a part of the group. So we'll let him be a part of the group, I guess. All right, guys, last time I was on this path was basically around 2000. I was trying to think, was it 99 or 2000? We'll call it 2000. So 21 years ago, I was uh, here strolling along this little path, which is a road. And um, just up here is going to be a bridge. And this is where I found Creek Boy. I'm actually already getting, I don't know if you can quite see that, hairs are already standing on end. I feel like I've attracted some attention. 
so hopefully I don't think there's I got too far we we're able to drive the van last time so I kind of got a little bit of a stroll ahead of me and here we are welcome to the park So here's the bridge, it's Highway 18, it's running right there. This is the bridge that I was standing on, and as far as the spot, I can actually tell you almost, that right there should have been the perfect spot. Twenty-one years later, that is where Creek Boy was. Because this is 14 Mile Creek. This whole area, the site of a bloody battlefield. Didn't have a cannon. Road and have a cannon there last time. Here's the other side. Creek boy, are you here? I don't have any devices other than this box which records video and sound. That should be more than enough. Are you with me? Wow, look at that. This is, why is there so much electromagnetic field here? This is dangerous. It's not solid. The fact that it's like this much EMF that's is constantly fluctuating, it's like if this was solid, uh, like that's as high as this device can go. And if that was solid and you were hanging around that much EMF for like an extended period of time, that's like, that's not healthy. Okay, what do you, let's try this. Is there something you want to know? What I'm curious about is basically if he's still here, the last time you chatted with him, he was not interested in moving on, that he okay. was basically just hanging out here. So it's like, okay, is that still the case? Okay, let's see. I think, I don't think he's there. I think some, something or someone else is. Um, yeah, he's not there anymore. Interesting. He's moved on. Someone else is there. It's almost like he got bumped out of his slot or something. It's so weird. It's wow. like he was it's like he was not forced, but it something some sort of exchange happened for him in his karmic cycle and he was um assured on and I, and I don't want to say force but I also am trying to find a word that's like you know not force sounds painful or bad or on oh, it wasn't that it was just okay this is what we're doing now so which happens to beings which is why you know we talk about it's not you know it, it's not you know, if 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 I didn't do this work or someone else didn't do this work, the beings are taken care of. Like their karma will still continue, and they'll be, if they want to pass over, they'll pass over, and blah blah. Um, all in due time. Um, and so that's really what's happened with him is his time was up. Like, okay, we let you hang and deal and do, and that's done now. Um, and so he was ushered along. 
and someone else filled that void something else filled that void that's a little it's kind of a yeah, like a I, I want to almost say trickster type just like an energy that's just like doesn't have is, is right now in a really superficial place in the sense that it's not looking to you know I'm not stuck I'm not wanting to move over I'm just kind of here leave me alone um, mm. but Creep Boy will be available to talk one day just not Ooh. now he does want you to know though that he will communicate with you one day he will do it either directly he's saying i'd like to do it directly but if i have to do it through someone else i'll do it through someone else now he but, being creep boy yes okay and he's talking to you not me oh okay copy that bro <laughs> <laughs> 